Join me in a fascinating world where light holds the key to healing and technology opens up endless possibilities for our bodies. Although we've covered the benefits of infrared therapy in the past, much controversy has developed over how to select the best possible infrared therapy device. The big question is, how do we figure out which one delivers the most therapeutic light dose? Is it power output or joules? In today's segment, I'll clarify the difference between milliwatts versus joules. You'll walk away armed with the knowledge you need to get the best possible device for nerve repair. Get ready for a mind-blowing revelation as we crack the code of power versus joules. It's going to be an eye-opener. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. Hello Health Explorers, if you've been told your neuropathy is permanent, I'm here to help you achieve new levels of health you've never dreamed possible. So make sure you click on the subscribe button for up to date and accurate information on peripheral neuropathy and what you can do to overcome it. Also, don't forget to click on the bell to get notified as soon as we publish new content. All right, let's get started. When you're on the lookout for the best infrared device to aid in nerve repair, there are quite a few factors you want to consider. You'll want to think about things like the right wavelength, pulse variations, and how well it covers the affected area, and the therapeutic dosage of light. All of these play a crucial role in getting the best results. I've covered all of these topics in my video called Avoid Buying Infrared Junk. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you take a look at it. I'll include a link in the video description below. Today, we'll focus slowly on one important aspect, and that's therapeutic dosage of light. Getting the right dose of light is key to making sure that the therapy works effectively in repairing nerves. When assessing the therapeutic dose of light, you'll often hear manufacturers refer to milliwatts per centimeter square, or you may hear joules per centimeter square, or the to total joules emitted during a treatment session. Here's the deal. There's an enormous amount of confusion because of the lack of standardized method to measure light output. This is fueling much of the fiery debate, but don't worry because today we'll be setting the record straight and revealing the truth behind this groundbreaking therapy. So to shed some light on the situation, all pun intended, it's important to understand some of the jargon that's used. First, let's define what the goal is. The ultimate goal of infrared treatment is to get the therapeutic light to the target tissue so it can exert a physiological effect. The infrared light that hits the tissue is measured in joules, which is the end product of what we're seeking. It's the joules that exert the healing effect when stimulating nerve repair and regeneration. Now, studies have revealed that when photons of light measured as joules are applied to the nervous system, it can enhance cellular metabolism, leading to improved energy production and better cell function. This will promote faster healing. It also has an anti-inflammatory effect, which may reduce the inflammation and swelling around damaged nerves. This will contribute to a more favorable healing environment. It can also increase blood flow. Infrared therapy can enhance blood flow to the treated area, ensuring adequate oxygen and nutrient supply to support nerve repair. It also has the ability to increase neurotrophic factor stimulation. Infrared therapy may stimulate the release of neurotrophic factors, which are essential for nerve growth and regeneration, and it can reduce pain. So now that we're familiar with the benefits of infrared light, let's discuss how to, dis how to select a device that will deliver all of these wonderful benefits and not waste your money. Now, many of the manufacturers will flaunt the power of their device by telling you how many milliwatts per centimeter square their device exerts. Now, stick with me because here's where the rubber meets the road. The power, or milliwatts, is a measurement of electrical energy that will be transformed into light heat, or a combination of both. Now, the efficiency of converting electrical power into light in the infrared light emitting de devices can vary depending on the specific type of LED and its operating condition. Now, here's the kicker. Infrared LED, LED lights have varying efficiency levels in converting this electrical power into light. 
And the range can be anywhere from, it can convert 5% of its electrical power into energy on up to 50%. Now, that's a huge range. This means that for every 100 milliwatts of electrical power supplied to an infrared LED, approximately 5 to 50 milliwatts are converted into light, and the rest is wasted or dissipated as heat. The efficiency can be affected by factors such as the LED design, the material used, the operating current, and the temperature. So here's the takeaway. When comparing two infrared devices, the efficiency in converting electrical power into light can vary significantly between manufacturers. So when comparing two devices by the power output or the milliwatts per centimeter square, it's a bit like comparing apples to oranges. However, when it comes to the heart of the, the matter, the therapeutic light measured as joules is what truly counts. It's the end product, the precious therapeutic light that we're after. So when we compare joules emitted from one device to another, we gain a much more accurate understanding of their potential and their effectiveness. It's the joules that sheds light on the real impact and guides us towards making the best possible choice. Now, to complicate things a little bit more, there's no standardized way of measuring the light or the joules emitted from the infrared device. However, I'll review the three most common methods employed by manufacturers for measuring joules output. Method number one, it's a theoretical measurement. Manufacturers will always showcase their infrared device so it sounds impressive. So it's important to understand what's really going on here. Quite often, manufacturers will calculate joules by the LED rating. For example, if a unit has 122 LEDs and each LED is rated at 20 joules per 20 minute session, the unit will produce 2,320 joules per treatment session, theoretically. Now here's the catch. During a treatment session, those LEDs will begin to heat up. And as they heat up, LEDs produce more heat and less light. Imagine the LED lights are like a powerful engine propelling a sports car forward. At the beginning of the journey, the car is firing on all cylinders efficiently, converting electrical power into therapeutic light like a well-tuned engine roaring down the highway. But as the trip continues and the engine begins to overheat, it will cause a loss of energy as excess heat. This drop in efficiency, often referred to as the droop phenomena, means the joules output of the infrared device might not be as high as advertised. It's like losing fuel efficiency as your car begins to overheat. The bottom line is, if a manufacturer is using theoretical calculations, it may not be very accurate. All right, on to method number two, where we use a power meter or a radiometer. Using a power meter or a radiometer to measure light output is like using a simple yardstick to measure the length of a winding river. While it can give you a general idea of the river's length, it won't capture all the twists and turns along the way. Similarly, these devices can estimate the energy output of, of an infrared unit, but they might not capture all the nuances and variations in the light emissions. So if a manufacturer relies solely on this method, it's like getting a rough approximation rather than a precise measurement. For more accurate results, we need specialized tools like an integrated sphere, which acts like a high-tech GPS, mapping the light's journey with precision and giving us the true and reliable measurements that we seek. All right, this brings us on to method number three, which is the integrated sphere. Now, the most accurate way to measure energy or joules from an infrared therapy device is by using a special tool called an integrated sphere. This sphere captures all the light emitted from the device and is then measured by a very precise sensor. This measurement gives us the most accurate amount of energy in joules that, device, that the device produces. Think of it like using a scale to measure your weight. The integrated sphere is like a special scale for measuring the energy and it ensures that we get the precise number of joules from the device. This is a method employed for scientific research and in medical settings where accuracy is of the utmost importance. Now, our interest was truly piqued when one of the manufacturers of the infrared device we carry took things to the next level. They sent not only their own, own infrared device, but also that of some of the top competitors to be tested at an independent lab with an integrated sphere. 
Let me tell you, the results were nothing short of astonishing. Take a look at this diagram. As you look at the horizontal axis, you'll see all the different brands that were tested. Neuropicom is the unit that we carry and use on our patients. The reason will become obvious in just a moment. The identity of the other brands has been concealed for obvious reasons. I didn't want a bunch of angry vendors blowing up my phone. <laughs> okay, now there's a couple of things I wanna point out. The bar graph reveals the total joules emitted by each device. Obviously, the higher the bar, the more joules emitted, which is a good thing. Now, notice how Neuropicom has the highest joules output boost in over 3,500 joules. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, how convenient, Neuropicom had the best results. Now, remember, this test was performed by an independent lab out of Colorado utilizing an integrated sphere, which is the gold standard for measuring joules. Another thing I wanna to bring to your attention to is the percentage of red versus blue color. The red indicates how much of the energy or joules came from infrared light, while the blue indicates how much energy came from red lights. Now, although red light is beneficial for healing wounds and exerts most of its effects on the skin, infrared light plays a more significant role in nerve repair and regeneration. In fact, infrared can penetrate much deeper into the tissue. Now, because our main goal is nerve repair, we want to see a much higher percentage of joules coming from the infrared spectrum. Now, take a look at brand H. And you'll, it, it, if you look at it, it appears that it has a very respectable amount of joules output, boosting over 2,000 joules. However, all the joules are being, that are being emitted is from red light with absolutely no light being emitted from the infrared spectrum, making it completely useless for nerve repair. I know we covered some technical information today, so let's put it into practical terms. This is such an important topic because what separates cheap, ineffective infrared units from a highly effective unit is almost always the joules output. So here's what you need to know. When buying an infrared unit, it's imperative to know the joules output. A good device should emit anywhere from 2,000 to 2,500 joules per treatment session depending on the size of the uh, therapy pad or the device. If the manufacturer can't tell you how many joules there are per treatment, I would simply walk away. There should be significantly more infrared diodes than there are red diodes. Ideally, I like to see a two to one ratio or something close to it. If the manufacturer can't tell you the method they use to measure the joules, I would be very suspicious. Ideally, you wanna see a device that's been measured with an integrating sphere and don't assess the device simply by its power output alone. Remember, joules are only one of several, several parameters used to assess the quality of an infrared unit. Be sure to watch my video on Avoid Buying Infrared Junk to learn everything you need to know to buy the most effective unit. Before we go, I have a special request for you. If you found value in our video today, make sure you like us and share the video with others so they know they're not alone on this journey to recovery. And if you're hungry for more knowledge, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to get notified when we release new content. Well, my health explorers, let infrared therapy light your path, guiding us to brighter days filled with strength, resilience, and the joy of living life to the fullest. Cheers to the transformative power of infrared therapy and your incredible journey to great nerve health. What you doing? You printing something? Okay. Yeah. Leading to improved energy production and better cell function.